All right, today's a wonderful day. I got a few friends with me today. Put your hands together. It's going to be an awesome service. And maybe you knew this, maybe you didn't. Some of you are waiting to come back to service. Well, August 1st, we are coming back to service, but it's limited space. You can go online to our website, crossover.church slash regather, and you can sign up. It's going to be safe. We're going to be social distancing. Uh, I know you're ready to get back, but maybe you're not. We're still going to have online services Sunday at 1030 a.m. as we just continue to uplift Jesus in this season and just continue to preach the gospel and do what God has called us to do. I want to encourage you right now to give online. You can go to our website, www.crossover.church slash give. And if you've been here for any moment in time, you already know you don't give to a church. You give what? Through a church. Through a church. And we've been making an impact this season in the community and so I'm just so thankful that everybody's been generous in their giving and so I want you to use this time to be able to pray to God about what he's asking you to give in this moment. Is anybody ready for the word today? Amen. Well if you're online go ahead and type word right there because it's the word of God that challenges us, convicts us, but ultimately changes us. We're going to be in Genesis chapter 45. Genesis chapter 45 if you got your Bible. You went past the first book of the Bible. You went too far. Genesis chapter 40, <laughs> 5. And when you get it, say word. word. Genesis 45. We're going to conclude our series today from dream to destiny. Has anybody been enjoying this series? Yes. 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 Genesis 45. It reads this from verse 3. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I'm your brother, Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now, there's been a famine in the land. And for the next five years, there will be not be plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve you for a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Verse eight. So then it was not you who sent me here, but God. Let me say that again. Amen. So then it was not you who sent me here, but God. One more time for somebody in the back. Yeah. It was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, Lord of his entire household and ruler of Egypt. One more time in case you missed it. It said it was not you who sent me here, but God. Today, I want to talk about the purpose test, understanding your destiny, the purpose test, understanding your destiny. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray as we conclude this series that it just won't be a series that we heard and we don't take actionable steps to make a difference in our lives. Lord, I ask that you would speak to us right now on what our purpose, what our calling, what our assignment is in this moment. As the grass withers and the flower may fade, it is your word that stands forever in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Someone has truthfully said, there's two important days of your life. The day you were born and the day you discover what you were born to do. In the text today, Joseph understands what he was born to do. In this particular text, Joseph now is 22 years later after he receives a dream from God. And for 13 years, he has to go through all these character tests, 10 character tests to, to build up his character so he can walk into the destiny that God has for him. And 11 out of those 13 years, Joseph is in prison for a crime that he did not commit. But when he comes out of that prison, now he's in charge second to Pharaoh over the entire land. And he's seeing prosperity in the land. But now he's dealing with the famine in the land. And last week we learned Joseph receives a surprise. And the surprise is his brothers who sold him into slavery come to him and bow down in front of him and notice how Joseph responds. He forgives them. 
I don't know about you, but if I was in that situation and someone tried to sell me into slavery and for 22 years lied to their father that their favorite son was dead and now you have an opportunity to get back at them, what would you do in that moment? I know what you're supposed to say right now, but what would you do in that moment? You might say, I'll forgive him, but not now. And it says in Genesis 42, don't turn, verse 8, it says, although Joseph recognized his brothers, they did not recognize him. Now, this is interesting because they're not even thinking about Jojo. They like Joseph, is he's gone. And now they didn't even know that was Joseph. Why? Because Joseph had an interpreter, but Joseph knew his brothers and they didn't recognize him. So this is key right here. How do you know you're growing in the faith? where people from the past don't recognize you because there was a time in your life you wouldn't have forgave someone for doing the very thing that they did to you. You got to grow up in your faith where people will look back and like, who is she? Who is he? You used to just cuss me out. You used to be smoking dope with me and all those. Don't look at me like that. You used to be doing all the very things that I did. How do you know you're growing in your faith where people are like, who are you? See, the challenge is you're looking at your friend saying y'all changing, but the reality is you're the one changing. You should get to a moment in your life where people say, who are you? I I don't recognize you anymore. They did not recognize Joseph because it's been so long in this moment. And it says in verse nine, then he remembered his dreams about them. You got to catch this because Joseph for 22 years, he gets a dream at what? 17. He's 39 years old. He forgot about the dream that God has given him. Why? Because when you're in a prison for so long, when you've been betrayed for so long, the very dreams that God gives you, you can forget. But all of a sudden, this this moment, he says, oh, I remember the dream I got at 17, which reminds me no matter what you've been through, no matter what you're facing, you got to hold on to the dream that God has given you because in the pit, God didn't forget the dream. In the prison, God didn't forget the dream. God does not forget dreams, but we do. And there's moments in our lives where God will remind us of the dream that he's put inside of our heart because everything you go through is part of God's plan. Now watch this. Doesn't mean he caused it, but it means he'll use it. So what you go through right now, God will use it in the future. God knows the beginning from the end. He sees the trials, the disappointments. And before time, he put a dream in you. You missed it. He already knew everything you would go through from the beginning to the end. And he put a dream in you. I'm going to say it one more time. From the beginning to the end, he knows every struggle, every disappointment. And he put a dream in you, which means he already knew everything you would face. And that's why he put that dream in you. And you're going to struggle. You're going to have moments where you're like, God, where are you at? Imagine Joseph in the prison. For 11 years, but God did not forget the dream. And God now gives Joseph a dream, but here it is right here. But Joseph was lacking revelation with the dream. That's where us, a lot of us are at right now. God has given us a dream, but you don't know the whole picture. Anybody know what I'm talking about? God is giving you snapshots. He's giving you glimpses. What God does, he gives you the movie trailer. He doesn't show you the whole picture. And what you need to get is a revelation. So in this moment right now, Joseph gets a revelation. God knew Joseph. He knew his experiences he had to go through. He knew his disposition. He knew his gifting. But he also knew that Egypt needed someone like Joseph. How do I know this? Because your purpose and dream is not about you. I need you to catch this because your purpose and dream is not about you. And so God will sometimes look at a generation and say, I got to raise up someone to deal with them right here. So here's the thing right now. All of us listening right now, even online, all of us have been through different experiences. And what happens sometimes we'll look at somebody else and say, how come he don't have to go through that? How come I got to go through this? Because God has to choose somebody in order to make a difference in a generation. 
And so what happens is God sometimes will allow certain things to happen in your life. I know you don't like it. I don't like it either. But he puts a grace in you because he says there's so many people that's got to go through the same thing that I need someone of somebody in the generation to be able to speak to the very thing that you came out of. And so God will give a dream to you. But he also has a people that are going to struggle. And it's our responsibility. I said it before that your misery is your ministry. Amen. See, sometimes we're trying to figure out what our purpose is and it's right in front of us. Whatever you've been through, God will use that so you can go back to people who've been through the very thing that you're facing right now. That's why some of you got to start, where's that movie script? You got to start writing that book. You got to start putting things down. Why? Because your ministry now was the misery that you've been through. And so Joseph now in this moment in front of his brothers, they don't recognize him and he forgave them. Here's the challenge for us. Can God trust you with the dream? Can God trust you with the dream? Are you dependable? Are you faithful? Faithfulness is this trustworthy and dependable. Now, I don't know about you, but maybe you got a uh, maybe a high school student and you give uh, the keys to the car. And you say, go to the grocery store and give me some bread. Just go right up to 7-Eleven, give me some bread, all right? They take your car and they go pick up their friends and go hoop and then they crash the car. And you're like, man, I just wanted you to be faithful going to the store and get me some bread. And now you still love your child, but what happened? There's a lack of trust right there. And so God loves us, but because we're not faithful in the small things, sometimes he can't trust us in the bigger things. And we got to understand that God wants us to do great things in the kingdom of God, but can he trust us with the little things that he puts in our hands? Write this question down. Can God trust you and depend on you with the purpose he's given you? Can God trust you and depend on you with the purpose he's given you? Now, I know what you want to say. I know you want to say yes right now. (laughs) But can he trust you with your time, with your talent, with your treasure? And God's put a purpose in you and God could trust Joseph. Now, at 17 years old, Joseph wasn't ready. It took 22 years later for Joseph to remember the dream God gave him. And when he remembered it, he's like, oh, I get it now. Now I'm in purpose. See, a lot of us want the details and everything. You don't know you're in purpose or what your purpose is till you're in your purpose. See, a lot of us are sitting at home. What's my purpose? What's my purpose? I don't know what my purpose is. If you start walking faith by faith, you will get to a point and wake up and say, now I've arrived in my purpose. See, when Joseph's brothers came to Joseph in that moment, that's when he realized he was in purpose. Even if you're going through a difficulty, even if you're in a a prison, you're persevering right now, that doesn't take away the purpose that God has given you. Joseph now recognized that he's in purpose. So today I want to talk about three keys that help you discover your purpose. See, we understand our purpose by understanding our destiny. Here's the first key. The first thing, if you want to unlock your purpose, you got to do this. Believe that you have a purpose. I know that's not deep, but you got to believe that you have a purpose. Talk to me now. I mean, you have to really understand and know that God has given you a purpose because everything God creates, he creates with purpose. Psalm 139 says this, verse 13, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body all the days ordained for me. You got to think about this. He said, even in the womb, I ordained you for a purpose. (laughs) Even when you are embryo, I had a purpose and call for you on your life. God's fingerprint is on you. You are not just going through life, figuring it out. That's the problem. See, when you don't know your purpose, when you don't know why God has called you here, that leads to frustration. Because everything you go through, it doesn't connect. You got to understand your life is like a puzzle. 
that's I know we don't like it, but God uses all things in order for us to walk into the purpose that he has for us. But the challenge is 80 percent of Christians in a survey says, I I don't know my purpose. 80 percent say, I don't know my purpose. And I think a lot of times we're trying to overthink what our purpose is. Some of us right now are in purpose. We just don't recognize it. We're in purpose. We don't recognize it. We're frustrated. Listen to me. God's purpose for your life doesn't mean you're not going to have trials. God's purpose of your life doesn't mean everything's going to be great in life. Some of us are in purpose right now. You're just going through a trial. You got to understand this. If God has called you to do something, he's not going to put you in an environment where everything's easy. See, God puts people in environments, Christians, that are bad. And you don't like the bad situation on your job, but that's why he put you there. You missed it. All right. Why would God put you just in a perfect environment if you're called to change that environment? So God sometimes will send you to a place that you don't like. And he says, no, I need you to get in purpose. The reason you're here is you're an intercessor. You're supposed to pray for everybody. You're supposed to make a difference in people's lives. Can I trust you? with where I called you. You got to get in purpose. And what God does, he sees what's in our hand and he takes what we like out of our hand and he puts something back in it. See, this is the problem right here because I remember when I was on the court playing basketball, I was doing my thing. I was just hooping y'all like, oh, that's good. That went in y'all, that went in. Now it went in. And and I'm playing. And some of you know the story crossover means to change directions. And all of a sudden I'm in the basketball game and the Lord's like, go home. And I'm like, what? Go go home. He took it out my hand. But he put something back in my hand. Just it looked a little bit different. And that's why the church is called crossover, because when you give your life to Christ, you change directions. So you got to understand God will take the very thing in your hand. See, if I'm just hooping and it's all about me, I wouldn't know anybody here right now. Y'all wouldn't be at Berg right now. Y'all wouldn't be here right now. But when you get in purpose, it's not about you. It's about other people around you. So when I look at everybody's face right here, every trial that I've been through, every challenge that I've been through, when I look at everybody's face right here, it lets me know that it was worth it. Because you can go back and reach somebody else. When Jesus saw Peter fishing, you remember that story? He said, follow me. I will make you a fisher of men. He said, take that fishing pole out of your hand and I'm going to put something in your hand. And now you'll be a fisher of men. He used his talent now to teach him a spiritual concept. He took the basketball out of my hand. And now he says, I want you to do something different with the talent and skills ability that I've given you. You got to understand your purpose. And no matter how difficult it gets, your purpose will always lead to excitement. See, how do you know some of us like we get, oh God, we just get mad at stuff we're doing because you're not called to do it. Stop doing it. Stop wasting your time. It's okay. Some of y'all was like, Pastor, I'm gonna help out in the nursery. You got in the nursery. Oh, H E double hockey sticks. You got out of there real quick. That's okay. <laughs> That's not your gift. Put the child down. All right. We gotta get in purpose. Joseph in the pit. Joseph, you remember that? The purity test where sister girl lied on him. Listen to me. That's how he got into jail for 11 years for doing the right thing. He still knew he had a purpose. I don't care what you're facing right now. You have a purpose. God is not looking for super Christians. He's looking for people who believe they have a purpose. So when you believe you have a purpose and now you say, God, every day when you go on your job, you wake up in the morning and say, God, use me today. Yes. Well, I don't got it all together. Then you're a candidate for him to use you because people will know God's working through you. See, when you think you got it all together, then God's not going to use you. But when you step into place, people are going to be like, oh, I know that was God because she a trip. <sighs> You are a perfect candidate for God to use. So number one, you got to believe that God has given you a purpose. Number two, here it is. God is always working. He is 
always working. In this pandemic right now, he is working. Sometimes I know it doesn't seem like he's working. He is working. The good, the bad, the ugly. He uses everything and he's working. And the question we ask is, what is God's will for my life? Anybody ever prayed that? God, what is your will for my life? I want you to write this down because that question right here, I think it needs to be altered a little bit. God, what is what is your will for my life? I think the question we need to ask is this. God, what is your will? And what I mean by that is sometimes if we're being honest, we want God to adjust to us. OK, OK. So, God, what is your will for my life? Instead of saying, God, what is your will? OK, I'm going to back it up one more time. God. What is your will for my life? God, this is where I'm going. Get behind me and bless everything that I'm doing. What you need to do is say, God, where are you working at? What are you doing in my life? Where are you going in my life? And get behind him. See, the issue is we want Jesus in the backseat of our car. Some of us put him in a trunk. But Jesus, if he takes the will, he takes us to the destiny. God, what is your will? God doesn't adjust to our lives. We need to adjust to his life. The Bible says, the Bible says those who come to me, he bids them death, which means when you come to Jesus, I know somebody might have said that you can bring everything and you don't got to change nothing in your life. No, no. When you come to him, that's what baptism is about. It means that the old man is dead. The new one is alive. God will use the old, but he wants to do a new thing in your life even right now. John chapter 5, verse 17, this is Jesus. It says, my father is always at his work to this very day. I, too, am working. Jesus said this, the son can do nothing by himself. This is King Jesus. He said, I can do nothing by myself. How come we think we can do something then? Jesus says, I can do nothing by myself. But if I'm being honest, I think I can sometimes do all things through Ken who strengthens me. Come on now. That's how we live life sometimes. He says this. He only does what he sees his father doing. Now, this is critical. Jesus, before he healed someone, before he fed the 5,000, he said, I already had to see what the father's will was. So that means I got to create space for myself to see what God is doing in my life. See, here's the challenge. Wake up in the morning. You running late for work and you going you going to work. You come back home and you got to fix your child something to eat. Then you get tired. You like we just getting the hot ready today. I know we had it yesterday. We getting it again. It was cheese. Now it's pepperoni. When is my day to cook? Amen. Anyway, wow, we tired. We got homework going on. And then you, you watch a little TV now and, and then you go to bed. It's like you don't even have space to think about what God is doing because we're just going through life. You have to create space. So one of the things I love doing, I come here about three days a week and I walk about a mile, two miles. And what am I doing? I'm creating space to understand what God is doing. I'm walking saying, God, what are you doing? through the conflict, through the difficulty. What are you doing? And he wants us to align to what he's doing. God is always working in the good, the bad, the ugly, when we don't understand it. But we treat God like it's Undercover Boss. You watch Undercover Boss? (laughs) Sometimes I love watching that show because on Undercover Boss, they don't know it's the boss. So you have employees sometimes that is next to the boss. They just popping off. I hate this place. The boss ain't doing nothing around here. But if they knew it was the boss, they would act different. If they knew it was the boss, they would honor and approach the boss differently because they know the boss can change their life. If you knew God was working and you knew he was the boss in your life, you would approach him differently, knowing that he has the ability, the want and the desire to change everything that you go through. But we don't even know what God is doing because we're too busy in life. That we're just going through the motions in life. Y'all hear that music? Yeah. That got nothing to do with the sermon. I just needed a time because God is doing something right now. Amen. Amen. Let me get to my notes. God is working. And if it's not good, then it's not God. But he's working in it. 
when Joseph was in the prison, hear me, for 11 years, God was working. But God wasn't necessarily working on getting him out. God was working on putting something in. Okay, he was working on Joseph's character, his ability, his skill set. What God is doing in this season for somebody in a prison in a difficulty right now, God is working on you so he can work through you. But before he works through you, he wants to work on you. Romans 8, 28 says this. It says, and we know that in all things. God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. Now, watch this. You've been reading that verse your whole life. It says according to his purpose, not your purpose, which means I got to align my life, not with my purpose, with his purpose. All of us came to Jesus with something in our hand. And he always says, give up something. And sometimes we're not willing to give it up. Right. But if you give it up, if you don't give it up, he can't put nothing in your hand. I want you to think about this. Abraham, right? He takes the promise. He takes Isaac in Genesis chapter 22. The one that he loves, he takes him up and God says, I I want you to I want you to I want you to kill him. What? Sacrifice my dream. Sacrifice the thing that I prayed for that you blessed me with. Why? He was testing him to see if he loved the dream more than him. So God sometimes for a season will take away that dream to see if you love him for the dream or you just love him. How do I find my purpose and my dream? Don't focus on the purpose and the dream. Focus on him and God will give you a dream and a desire that you never had before. We got to get in purpose and you get in purpose by falling in love with the one that gives you purpose. It says in Genesis 45, verse seven, but God sent me. He's talking to his brothers ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by great deliverance. That's his purpose. His purpose was this to save millions of people who are going to die from starvation. So God needed someone with leadership ability, with administration skills who can interpret dreams to go up to Pharaoh and say, I know this is a prosperous life right now and everybody at the club having fun. Listen to me for seven years now. I know you can't see it, but for seven years, there's going to be a famine in the land. And so when you get a dream, no matter what you see, you got to believe what God is telling you, even though you might see that something is different than what he's telling you. Joseph was like, no, things are going to change right now. And it says this. It is not you who sent me here, but God. This is how you know you're maturing in the faith. Now, this is difficult. I'm going to lose 90 percent of people right here. I don't even know if I'm there right now. For 22 years, for most of the time, he had to go through hell and his brothers are in front of him. And he says, y'all didn't even do it. God did it. (laughs) You missed it. I know you threw me in the pit, but God did it. Because I wouldn't be in purpose if it wasn't for the struggle that I've been through. We got to stop being mad at other folk. You are here now. (laughs) You're here now. There's no point. I'm not going to let unforgiveness keep me from God's destiny. I'm not going to allow people to occupy my time. I'm not going to let somebody who speaks evil over me prevent me from my destiny. See, your mind is like a two car garage and you can't fit nothing else in it because you got so much unforgiveness. You can't fit nothing in there because you keep thinking about what you've been through instead of where God has taken you. You be around those people that keep talking about the past. Thank God for the past. I'm ready to move on. Listen to me. I understand that Joseph's 39 for 22 years had to go through that. But Joseph was like, man, I got a lot of life to live. And I'm not going to dwell on the path. God did it. I'm here now. And God did it. How do we know we're maturing in the faith when we can look at every obstacle and say, you know what? I didn't like it, but God did it. And he works out everything for his purpose. And so I'm going to line up my will to his will. I'm not going to have God conform to my will. I'm going to conform to his will. Y'all getting this? Here's the third key. I'm going to get out your way. 
Your purpose gives directions, not specifics. <laughs> Your purpose gives direction, not specifics. Let's be honest today. Some of us, we haven't taken that step of faith because we want specifics. Yeah. <laughs> you want it mapped out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want it mapped out. God's purpose is not a GPS, it's a compass. See, a GPS will tell you step by step where you're going. A compass won't. A compass will just point you into the direction to go. And you won't know you arrived until you get there. You won't know you're there until you get there. Follow the North Star. What? Follow the North Star? You won't know you're there until you get under the North Star. Some of us are looking for a GPS direction. You, like right now, we're going on this mini vacation. Where are you going, kid? Don't worry about it. We're going on this vacation next week to this cabin. I've never been there. We're going up north. And so I'm like, we're going up north with this racial climate. I need di specific directions on what gas stations we stopping at. Where to eat. I need to map it out step by step. How many miles? How are we going to get there? It don't work like that with God. We come to God like this. God, I'm giving you three months to turn this thing around. <laughs> I'll give you my life for three days. That's it. That's it. That's all you get. You get three. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, he wrote, you're getting three. We want specifics. He doesn't give specifics. He tell Abraham, just go. Just go. Start walking, I'll start talking. Just go. Step by step. He went, Psalm 119, I'm finished everybody. 105 says, your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. It doesn't say he's a spotlight. It says he's a lamp, which means I gotta take step by step. All a lamp does is reveal the next step. Some of us want a spotlight to see everything. God doesn't let you see everything because if you did, you would be frightened and you would never take the first step. You can't see it on camera, but there's a fake dog there right now. But I want you to imagine if it was a real dog and I was supposed to get over there. If I saw that it was a real dog or even at nighttime, it was a fake dog. and I ain't going over there. But if I went step by step and if I kept going and a dog was in my way, I would kick that dog out of the way and walk to where God wants me to go. But if God showed you the whole picture, you know, we ain't got no money. <laughs> Who going to pay for that? Come on. We ain't never had money in our family. What? You know what I'm talking about. He takes a step by step. Your purpose gives directions, not specifics. Your gift will give you direction in your life. Now, how do you know when you get to your specifics? How do you know that when you do the specifics? God doesn't show you the specifics, but when you do the specifics, you know that you're in purpose. I can't give you a step-by-step -step formula on when you get to your purpose. If you're just faithful with the little, if you're just faithful in what God is telling you to do today, you will walk into your purpose. And I'm submitting to you today that some of us are already in purpose. Purpose does not mean that everything's going to be so great. Purpose means that God sends you places to solve a problem. Okay. He sends you places to be able to solve a problem. He sent Joseph to a place where millions of people would be in a famine. And he put Joseph there. He said, Joseph, uh, you got administrative gifts. Joseph, you got leadership. And Joseph knew his calling. Why? Because Joseph was number two everywhere that he went. Joseph was number two in the palace. Joseph was number two in the prison and Joseph was number two at Pharaoh's house because he knew his purpose. He knew his gifting and his grace. You got to get to the point where you know your grace and your gifting. And even if something small, be cool with what God has given you because he will use it in that moment. You just got to be faithful to what God has called you to do. I'm closing everybody, but I'm reminded of this famous theologian, John Wesley. And if you ever read his autobiography, he has a journal entry. And this is what he says on his journal entry. He says, Sunday a.m., May 5th, I preached in St. 
ands and I was asked to not come back anymore. In the PM, I preached at this church, St. John's, and they said, get out and stay out. May 12th, I preached at St. Jude's. I can't go back there either. <laughs> he says, May 12th at night, I got kicked out again. I'm going to stop right there. If that happened four times to us, you would say, I guess I'm not called to do it. I guess I'm not gifted. Four times I felt God called me to preach the word and they kicked me out of the church. Not that they didn't like it. Not that they tuned off of Facebook. They kicked him out of the church because of the gift that he thought that God gave him. But he was faithful. Then it says this, May 19th, he preached at St. Somebody Else's Church. That's what he put right here. He's like, man, I don't even know the church anymore. They called a special meeting and said that I couldn't return. That night, I preached on the street, got kicked off the street. May 26th, I preached in a meadow. I got chased out of a meadow as a bull was turned loose during the services. June 2nd, I preached out at the edge of town and I got kicked off the highway. Day after day, it wasn't working. Day after day, he's getting kicked out. I'm pretty sure everybody around him who he shared the dream with was like, man, why don't you just give up? What are you doing, man? You need to stop. You're getting kicked out of places, man. But that same night, after he got kicked out, it said he preached in a field and 10,000 people came. Y'all missed it. If he would have stopped at that moment, he would have missed the purpose and the opportunity and the blessing that God was showing him. I just believe that God was testing his faithfulness. So many of us predicate our purpose on results instead of being faithful to where God has placed us. Joseph was faithful. He wasn't perfect. God is not looking for perfection. He's looking for progression. But he was faithful. John Wesley, one of the greatest theologians of all time, he, he, he was faithful. Joseph didn't know the specifics of his destiny. And you might, not know, you might not know the specifics of your destiny, but if you're like Joseph, to continue to trust God, you will fulfill your destiny one day. Listen to me, I don't want you just to walk into your destiny. I want you to fulfill your destiny. Some of us, if we're honest today and we would just be self-aware that you're in your destiny right now, it's just not fulfilled. See, see, Joseph, it took him 13 years mm -hmm. to get to his destiny. Now he's nine years into the destiny. And then Joseph lived again for another 20 years. So what I'm saying is it's not just about getting to your destiny. It's fulfilling your destiny. And character is the one that keeps you in that destiny. See, Joseph had to go through the pride test. But then he went through a pit test, the promotion test the purity test, the prison test, the prophetic test, the power test, the prosperity test, the pardon test, and the purpose test. The question is, where is God testing you right now? Where is God testing you right now? And can I challenge you because we've been in this series for about three months right now, and I wanna ask you a direct question. Have you even asked God, what is my purpose? Has those words came out of your mouth? God, what is my purpose? God, what test am I on right now? God, show me right now where you're working. Show me what you want to do right now. God, give me a dream. Bring it back to my remembrance. God, why am I going through this struggle right now? God is always working. God has a purpose in your life, but God will test you to develop your character. So when you get in purpose, you won't lose the purpose. Let's pray. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray right now that you would speak to us and that we would know without a doubt that you've put a purpose inside of us. And the enemy, what he wants to do, he wants us to look at our circumstances and for us to believe that we no longer have a purpose, that that dream will never come to fruition. Lord, I'm asking right now that you would put that dream back in our hearts. And if you've never given anybody a dream, that you would place it in there right now. Lord, I'm asking right now that you would give us the perseverance to get through difficult times and circumstances. I pray right now that we would understand that our purpose and calling has nothing to do with us. But there's people that need to hear a word from Jesus. They need to be encouraged. Lord, so I just ask that you would send me to do it. 
I know my purpose isn't going to lead to great times all the time. But Lord, I ask that you would still keep me faithful throughout it. Just as you kept Joseph faithful. I pray that you keep me faithful. I know, God, that I've made mistakes. I've, I've walked away at times, Lord, but I, I thank you for your offer of forgiveness. Lord, and I pray, Jesus, that, that you will give me an opportunity to do what's right in your sight. If there's anybody watching right now and maybe you say, I don't even have a relationship with Jesus, or maybe you say that you, you walked away, whatever you want to say about that, I, I just believe that God is speaking to you in this moment because the greatest purpose that you can have is giving your life to Christ. The reality is all of our purposes line up with this. Our purposes is, is to glorify God in whatever we're doing. He gives us different things to do, different assignments, but inside of that assignment is to glorify God. And number one, he wants us to glorify him with our actions, with our faith, and ultimately giving our lives to him. So I want to encourage you in this moment, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death, that when Adam, he ate the fruit, it says that sin entered the world. And Jesus now, he's reconciled us back to the Father. And so what I want you to do is on the screen right here, I want you to text this number 248-717-2032. I want you to text FAITH to 248-717-2032. And we're going to follow up with you because we believe salvation is not the finish line. It is the starting line of your life. Were you guys blessed because of this series? Yes. Well, man, I am excited. Listen to me. As I said on the onset, we're getting ready to come back to church. It's going to be limited space. Right now, we have more people that's actually going to be in our church. And so we want to create a safe environment for you. I want you to go online. You have to register on our website, crossover.church slash regather. And we're going to keep moving forward. We got a whole nother series coming up next week entitled Reset. And we're going to be talking about in this season, I believe God is calling us individually to reset some things. And so we can just give our life to Christ. Not only that, so we can hear from God and move forward in the direction he's calling us to go. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's message and we will see you next week.